So, you are Tommy, right? <laughs> are you fucking ready? To start off writing a song, we write a lot in the computer world instead of being a band that rehearses and kind of comes up with things together and try to evolve them as such. We just kind of automatically search for something that we haven't heard ourselves do before at least, you know. It's a little hard to explain since I don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> Thomas Hawk has become a household name in the metal world. He's been working with Meshuggah since he was 19, recording on all of the band's live and studio albums, including Nothing and Obzen. From his mastery of double bass patterns, crazy technical prowess, and his outside-the-box style of playing that perfectly complements Meshuggah's really technical music. And he's created one of the most iconic drum parts of all time. It was one of those songs that we didn't know if it was if I was gonna be able to do it. So for a few months, we didn't know if, if, if we were gonna have it on the album or not. Join us as we dive into the genius of Thomas Hawk. Thomas Hawk has been a monster on Double Kick through the entirety of his career. One of the first songs that always comes to mind when I think about Meshuggah is New Millennium Cyanide Christ. A more recent example of Hawk killing it in the double kick realm can be heard on the Abysmal Eye from Immutable. Abysmal Eye, for sure, is a lot. Like, literally 30, 45 seconds into it, I'm like, oh my god, I think I'm gonna die. In the track Clockworks, Thomas weaves a pattern of snare, right kick, left kick through 16th and 16th triplets as his snare drum follows the guitar rhythm. Talk about relentless consistency. The demon's name is Surveillance, has at most a couple seconds of break from that kick drum pattern in the entire song. A song which features what is probably the heaviest and most badass shuffle ever recorded. Up next is perhaps the song Thomas is most known for. Let's see if you can guess what it is from Bill Burr's description. Do you want to check out a fucking unbelievable song? So that song is called Bleed. It's about a, a brain hemorrhage. Well, they play two time signatures against each other. He was playing four on top and underneath he was playing a different time signature with his feet and it still grew and people could still intellectually wrap their head around it because he had that four four pulse on top. It was the sickest thing I had ever seen. So that's just ridiculous. This is what's called the Herda. It goes like this, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now let's see what that sounds like lined up with our hands. That song alone, I think I spent probably as much time on that track alone as I did all the other tracks combined. Basically, I had to kind of change my approach to how I played the bass drums. I always used to just like pummel like really hard. And, and for this one, I don't play as hard. I kind of lean back more and you kind of keep your feet in the air. It's more like tap dancing. Like, yeah. So you play it softer, but the main obstacle for me was to just learn that basic pattern. Not only is the intensity at a full on 10 for the entire seven and a half minute song, Hawk's relentless herda driven pattern keeps evolving and changing throughout the entire track. In verse two, we get the first variation of the pattern. Then another variation. Yeah. 
and another. This pattern keeps getting spread out in increasingly complex fashion throughout the entirety of the track. So obviously those kick drum patterns are relentless and crazy to play with in bleed. If you need help working on this stuff, we have all the tools inside Drumio where you can loop and slow down and work on these at your own pace to your heart's content. Not to mention we have tons of their songs transcribed note for note so you know exactly what they're doing. You can click the link below and get a seven day free trial right now. When you listen to the grooves that Thomas plays, you'll probably notice that they don't sound like your typical drum grooves that you hear on most tracks across other genres, even including metal. We never jam. We all kind of know how to program drums and where I will like mess around on the kit and then I find something like, yeah, this sounds like this could be something cool. Then I kind of immediately leave the drum set and I just take that to the computer world, what it's like fresh. And there you can kind of mess around with it and kind of see where you can hmm. take this. This goes for all the records that Thomas has played on. Here's an example of a ride cymbal groove that Thomas plays on the song Qualms of Reality off Meshuggah's first album, which had more of a thrash metal sound to it. And the same goes for more recent Meshuggah albums like Obzen. Here's a groove that Thomas plays on the title track around the three minute mark. Pineal gland optics opens up with what sounds like pure chaos, even with the help of a straight up two and four backbeat. What is important and what's good for the song? Is it to make it just really weird and like impossible to follow for people? Or is it to make it cool and intriguing, but it has a flow, you know? And th that flow is something that we always search for. That's what, that's the main thing with, with the band. That we, if you start headbanging to a track, you know, live, even if you've never heard us before, you can just keep that going. And even though people might not understand what we're doing, they can still see, either see like the, the band like banging or, or they can feel that kind of that flow. And that's the most important thing. One of the heaviest Meshuggah tracks on Nothing is Spasm with its crazy low pitched guitars. In the verse, Thomas drops another super unusual groove bomb on us as he outlines the guitar rhythm with his kick and snare under a heavy quarter note accented tight hi-hat. Let's take a closer look at how that works. Another great example of a totally unusual groove kicks off I Am Colossus. Here, Thomas' left foot on the hats and snare drum outline a steady 4-4, while his accents follow the guitar line through a twistedly straight offbeat triplet rhythm. My favorite track from Immutable has got to be Phantoms. Let's check out what happens around the three minute mark. Again, we have hats and snare drums showing us the 4-4 framework, but what's happening around it is straight up chaotic in the best possible way. We, we certainly never, you know, play to any kind of sheet music or anything. It's all just, you know, up here, of course, you know. That, that aspect of it is it's always a little bit like, how do you learn all the polar rhythms? I mean, well, what do you mean? My introduction to Meshuggah was New Millennium Cyanide Christ. Before I had any idea who they were or what kind of rhythmic tricks I was about to discover, my first impression was that I just couldn't believe how headbangable the pocket was through these really unusual rhythms. It wasn't until I started writing down the rhythms and counting that I realized what was actually happening. It was so headbangable because basically the entire thing was in 4-4. The riffs in the song go way over the bar line in neat, logical four and eight bar phrases. In fact, there's only a single bar of actual odd time in the entire tune, a fact that made me burst out laughing when it originally occurred to me. Let's 
Let's break down how this works on one of the shorter phrases. The verse only takes four bars to complete with a riff and kick pattern that's based in 3-4. Crazy over the bar line phrasing in a head bangable framework really is the heart and soul of Meshuggah's music. Another excellent example of this is in Rational Gaze. Pay close attention to the backbeat. I promise you, it sounds nuts, but it's in four. We find this still to be the case even in their thrashier tunes, like this section from Future Breed Machine, a fan favorite and classic Mashuga show closer. Now, if that version isn't for you, you can check out this other version that they've made of this song where Thomas again is on drums, but he's also on vocals. Thomas doesn't always outline the 4-4 framework quite so obviously. A great example of this is in Do Not Look Down, where the guitar line is in 1716. Until it cuts itself off strangely into the verse, where Thomas makes the 4-4 perspective clear. What's cool here is that the intro 1716 is the same framework as the verse, meaning it's also in 4-4. And when you hear it from this perspective, that strange transition into the verse actually makes perfect sense how it kicks in. Now, Thomas doesn't always give us a backbeat on three that makes it easy to follow his grooves. Frequently, he uses the snare to voice pieces of the overlapping rhythms. This results in incredibly syncopated sounding beats. A great example of this is in the interlude in Rational Gaze. Here, the rhythm is actually the same as in the intro to the tune, but without the backbeat, it feels completely different. Stenga, the opening track from Nothing, has some classic Thomas phrasing in it. It takes a really simple kick and snare pattern, just kick, kick, snare, over and over again. But he applies it to the six note, 11 eighth note long guitar line, almost like an extremely twisted, we will rock you. Another great example from this is in Sum from Catch 33, a record that doesn't get nearly enough love in my opinion. It's a really heavy progressive journey that completely abandons traditional song form. One of the thrashier tracks on Chaos Fear is Corridor of Chameleons, which features a 5-8 pattern that Thomas punctuates with his snare and kicks. Traditional backbeat, totally absent until the nearly three minute mark in this track. Speaking of Chaos Fear, the album opens up with full-on chaos in the track Concatenation. This is an instance where Thomas doesn't give you anything that even remotely resembles a traditional backbeat at any point in the tune.
One of my absolute favorite tracks from Chaos Sphere is the exquisite machinery of torture. Here, the guitars are using one of the cooler rhythms that you can phrase a seven note pattern with, hitting the first, fourth, and fifth note. But they're doing this through triplets, which makes the backbeat seem like it's coming in these crazy spots. The craziest part here is that it's a normal halftime 4-4. It's on beat three every time. Another thing that's signature to Thomas's playing is how he utilizes ghost notes. There's almost always a syncopated rhythm happening in between the accents as he navigates Meshuggah's masterfully crafted rhythms. This is a consistent flavor in Hawk's drumming, right back to the beginning of Meshuggah's recording career. Here's a killer fusion-y section from Sickening on the Nun EP. <laughs> In this live clip of Rational Gaze, you can clearly see a flurry of offbeat ghost notes syncopating Thomas's beats. Thomas uses a similar pattern with ghost notes filling in most of the offbeat 16th notes when he plays Stanga live. Check out this cool version of the beat where he's adding a few crashes and ghosting through the spaces. An easy way to replicate this feel is by playing full 16th notes with your hands. Your right hand on the china, accenting on the beat, loud, quiet, loud, quiet, and your left hand playing ghost notes on all of the offbeat 16th note spaces. Every one of the snare accents lines up in this pattern so your hands never have to change the rhythm. Kolos is also action-packed with funky, syncopated ghost notary. Let's take a look at Thomas's marrow performance from the Sabian cymbal vote. So that's gonna wrap it up for the genius of Thomas Hawk. I don't think there's another drummer alive who can make such rhythmically adventurous music groove so hard. His ability to time a sugar zany over the bar line phrasing into an absolutely headbangable territory is unmatched. Let us know down in the comments what's one thing that you've learned from listening to Thomas Hawk. And don't forget to check out all of the note for note Thomas Hawk song transcriptions we have available on Drumio, where you can learn exactly what he played on your favorite tracks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you inside the next one. Later.